Alrighty, this honestly has felt like it's been forever since a construction update on Yukon Striker. In fact, this has been our longest break in between construction updates on Yukon Striker ever. We are almost at two weeks. I think we're at like a week and a half um, in between our last construction update on Yukon Striker. My DMs are like, when are you going to do it? Comments on other videos that have nothing to do with Wonderland are like, when is the update on Yukon Striker? People on Discord are being like, when are you going to do an update on <laughs> Yukon Striker? Well, here it is. And this one is packed full with information. I regret not flying now. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to wait. There's not too much else to do on Yukon Striker before testing begins. We already know about the path on Orbiter. And outside of that, there's nothing else going on. Well, boy, was I wrong. There's lots going on. In fact, wow. Um, so why don't we try and get this started? I'm going to try and for, um, not forget about some of the things that we analyzed in the footage that was actually from this morning. So it's extremely up to date. Um, so as you can see, they're just kicking dirt around for Frontier Canada. Nothing noticeable yet that can help us form an idea of what's possibly going on. Um, but if you look at the station area, um, hopefully you're not seeing anything yet that I don't want you to see. But the station area is taking form. It looks like they're ready to actually put the roof on. Um, I don't know if the roof is going to be just shingles or some wood design or metal sheeting to look like a mine. Um, shaft. I can actually tell now from this angle that it is going to be a mine shaft looking building. As you um, look there, it definitely looks very mine shaft like. I am a little surprised um, that it is wood. I can definitely tell that it is timber kits doing the station. It's got that beautiful design to the wood and craftsmanship. It looks stunning. I'm just hoping for some actual artwork and design to the station and not some just generic wood. Um, timber kit structure, even though they're gorgeous, I'm not insulting the structures whatsoever, but for a station, I'm hoping for a little more. So I'm, I'm gonna cross my fingers um, and hope that we get that nice, beautiful design similar to Copperhead Strike, you know, the, the beautiful barn, and I, I was expecting something like that. Um, so still fingers crossed for that, I really wanna see something. But you probably have noticed something on the track heading into the station, it is parked um, almost in the station at this point, half on the transfer track and the front car in the station area. Um, that is Yukon Strikers train. Yes, train number one is sitting on the transfer track and slightly in the station. I believe there are no water dummies on the train. They are not testing. Don't worry, it's too cold and the control panel is not set up. I have a feeling they're testing the transfer track. They're probably testing mechanisms. You similar to what you saw at Copperhead Strike, you know, they roll it in and out of the station for a good like week before they actually started testing it. They would continuously roll it into the station, back out of the station, into the station, back out of the station. You know the drill. They kept doing that for about a week before they started testing. And that's probably something similar to what they're doing on Yukon Striker. Um, and uh, another uh, proof that it's not testing yet. There is still something. If you look at the turn of the station at about the halfway point, there is still something on the track. I don't know what that object is from the drone. It either looks like just a tarp um, covering something on the track, or it's like a, one of those scanners that they send around the track to check for cracks, similar to something that we saw on Behemoth early in the off season. Don't know though, I can't confirm what it is. Um, but yeah, it's, it's exciting nonetheless. They are definitely getting very close to testing. Spring is arrived. Knock on wood, everyone. Please, let's not jinx this. But spring has arrived by the looks of it. We have one more day of cold left, and then it looks like early spring is here. Um, that means Yukon Striker can probably test any day after tomorrow. Um, but again, we need a control panel. We need an op booth, and I do not see any finished signs of that. Um, I do see what looks like an op booth being constructed on the right side of the track. So the exit portion of Yukon Striker. That's really fascinating. Um, and uh, if you got a good view of Mindbuster, it does look like some retracking is going on. Again, a very small portion. Um, keep that in mind. It's an extremely small portion, just like the season before. Unlike Wild Beast, which has massive sections done at times. Um, you're seeing a very small portion as you head up into the turnaround. It looks like there's some fresh lumber there with no steel or iron on top, whatever they use for wooden coasters. 
Uh, there is no uh, steel or iron on top of the fresh wood yet. So obviously there's some signs of retracking going on there. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a lead car. The red lead car for Behemoth is sitting off underneath the storage facility. So that's going to be lifted into place soon as they get ready to start training, testing the rides. This park is going to become a buzz in the coming weeks. I remember from last year, almost every ride starts testing soon. Behemoth is one of the first rides they started testing last year, and I have a feeling that'll be the same. Now let's look. Look into Kingswood area. What do you guys notice? This is what has me shook. I made a video about this, I think, uh, about four months ago during my older sister's wedding. And then I also made an update video pretty recently about what I think could be going on there. And it looks like it might come true. I'm kind of shocked that it's already starting, but they're digging up land, digging up a little bit of land outside of the Kingswood Theater area, kind of where that second entrance that they don't utilize, they utilize it for school events that leads on over to Time Warp. They've been digging up a little bit of land over there. Um, so there's a digger, uh, excavator is the proper word, over there digging land. And if you look at Orbiter, they're building that path that we were talking about that you can see on the um, app's map that's been slightly updated. Not fully updated, but slightly updated. So they're um, building that path that's going to connect the Behemoth midway over to Yukon Striker, um, which will help ease uh, congestion. So that's super awesome. My Buster still got his blue train um, just sitting outside of the little storage area there. Um, again, nothing too much more going on in terms of that. So I had originally predicted that Yukon Striker would test around the March 22nd weekend. I'm still going to hold that as it's um, kind of like a guess, but I am starting to feel like we could potentially see some test runs a little bit before then. And fingers crossed, I'm hoping that because I'm not in Canada the March 22nd weekend. I'm over at Carowinds in Dollywood. Um, for that weekend, so it would really hurt my feelings to not be here for the first test runs of Yukon Striker. Um, in fact, I was like, I was like mocking the group I'm going with, um, saying, uh, if they start testing, I'm heading home. <laughs> I don't care how amazing Carowinds and Dollywood is, and hopefully there's some really exciting content coming for Dollywood. Uh, just waiting for a few more emails, but um, I'm gonna come home because. <laughs> I really want to see this first test run of Yukon Striker. Thank goodness I have Christian on the team. So Craigo will be out flying the drones, checking for testing. Uh, and we will try our best to make sure that we get multi-angle. We'll have two drones up in the air, one on the far left of the field and one on the far right of the field, capturing that multi-angle of Yukon Striker. So I've handed my drone over to Craigo. I'm going to drop it off before I head on over so we can grab that multi-angle when it does happen. Um, so that'll be super exciting. And here's a little close up shot of what I was talking about um, outside of Kingswood. So they're definitely digging up some land. Um, to be honest, I would love to see some sort of entertainment district form um, in this area. Maybe even use up some of the parking lot. Uh, we know that a parking garage is eventually going to have to come to Canada's Wonderland. I think this is going to be the year that really shows that to Wonderland uh, with Yukon Striker and the media around the world covering it. And the parking lot is probably going to be really full. So hopefully um, we see some big changes with that. But nonetheless, uh, not too much else to discuss. We don't know any information about um, Frontier Canada. Based off of what Carowinds just announced for Blue Ridge Junction, I am going to guess that we are going to see some sort of panning for gold experience. Um, and uh, I don't know about a restaurant. I would love to see a restaurant in Frontier Canada. If they can't come up with one, maybe retheme coasters into some sort of Frontier Canada restaurant as you enter Frontier Canada in that portion. Um, but I don't know what else they're going to do. There's not too much land to play around with, so I'm not expecting something too massive in terms of Frontier Canada. Uh, and again, it's probably going to be a multi-year expansion. But what do I know? Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, and I look forward to any media events coming up. Anyways, thanks so much, guys, for watching this update on Yukon Striker and Frontier Canada. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye.